introduce everybody today. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this morning is Father Hickey, and at this time I'd like to remind you to turn off your cell phones. Our opening hymn is number 567, Praise the Lord Ye Heavens, number 567. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. This morning we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And this Mass is being offered for Linda Murphy. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. mercy. Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst. The mothers and those with child, <clears throat> they, return, they shall return <clears throat> as an immense throng. They departed in tears, excuse me, <clears throat> but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to the brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am the father of Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when God call, one called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, 
you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, master, I want to see. Jesus told him, go your way, your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today's Gospel story of Jesus and Bartimaeus closes a section of Mark's Gospel that began with the two stage healing of a blind man in Bethsaida. The beginning of Jesus' journey toward Jerusalem was preceded by the gradual healing of the blind man at Bethsaida. It was the crowd in Bethsaida that brought the blind man to Jesus, asking him to heal the blind man. Jesus putting spittle in the blind man's eyes and laying his hands on the man, <coughs> then asked him, asked the man, do you see anything? The man said, I see people looking like trees and walking. After Jesus laid his hands on the man a second time, the man was cured and was instructed by Jesus to return to his home. Now at the end of the journey, Jesus' journey, just before the entrance into Jerusalem, is another healing of a blind man, this time instantaneous and complete. In between the two healings, we hear Jesus' three attempts to assure the disciples that he would suffer, die, and be raised by God. Mark framed the journey in this way to symbolize that it was all about the healing of the disciples' spiritual blindness. Jesus had been teaching them all along the way and at this point, their vision is still only partial. They do not yet grasp who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. Only after the resurrection will their eyes be fully opened. The gospel reading also had an application that is a message for Mark's early Christian community hearing the scripture passage. Hoping that they will also gradually come to perceive who Jesus really is. Last week, Jesus responded to James and John with the same question that he posed to Bartimaeus. What do you want me to do for you? They inadvertently exposed their self-seeking and lack of understanding of Jesus' mission by asking for places of honor by his side. Bartimaeus, knowing he had absolutely nothing to lose, started to cry out, Son of David, have pity on me. Nobody had ever called on Jesus or asked for something in exactly that way. Bartimaeus makes a very important statement of faith that had clear messianic implications. He was a beggar, a person deeply aware of his need for God's help. When Jesus called Bartimaeus to come to him, he leaped up, leaving behind his beggar's garb without any hint of a second thought. Then Bartimaeus stood standing before Jesus in total vulnerability. 
Mark's detail of Bartimaeus leaving behind his cloak symbolizes his leaving behind his former life. As Christians, we are called to put off the old nature at baptism and throughout our life. Then Jesus asked the all-important, pivotal, unmatched question, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus, the model of disciples, responds, Master, I want to see. That is the one thing that the disciples had not asked Jesus. They'd asked Jesus to avoid his suffering. They'd asked for places of honor, but they had never begged him for such understanding. Bartimaeus sought not simply vision, but understanding. Jesus' response to Bartimaeus, your faith has saved you, and he received his sight. Bartimaeus is healed physically, but even more, the eyes of his heart are enlightened. He demonstrates the perfect response to being healed. He follows Jesus on the way of his discipleship. And when we receive spiritual sight, we come to know and understand that the wisdom of this world is foolishness. By embracing a spiritual heart, applying our gift of spiritual sight, we can walk in harmony with the divine will of God to help our brothers and sisters along the way who face challenges and great difficulties in their lives. While physical sight is desirable, spiritual sight is an absolute necessity for our salvation. Bartimaeus is our guide. He asks for the most important gift God can give and the one that opens us to every other gift. Bartimaeus will see what is of that real value. He'll know what is true. He'll judge rightly, will walk confidently in the light of Christ. The first thing Bartimaeus sees when he is healed is the face of Jesus. To know Jesus is the key to Christian life, the focus of all Christian spirituality, the goal of all prayer. To know Jesus is to know God and to know our true self. There is no good greater than this, no blessing as significant in its effect on us. Once Bartimaeus has seen Jesus face to face, there's no other life for him except to be with Jesus, to follow him. He joins Jesus and the other disciples on their way to Jerusalem. Like a man in love, he has seen the face of his beloved and there is no turning back. His heart is fixed on what will truly satisfy him. Bartimaeus, named in the gospel, is remembered these 2,000 years later for his courage to ask to see. So let us not be afraid to pray his prayer, to ask to truly see. And I'd like to end with this following prayer. Loving Jesus, open my eyes to see what you want me to see. And let me respond with your healing heart to care for those around me. Guide me to remember that you will be with me when I see some of the painful and frightening situations around me and show me how to let them into my heart. I trust that if you let me see with your eyes of love and feel with the warmth of your heart, then you'll give me the grace to respond to you. You know that I really do want to respond to your call more freely and without fear in my daily life, to my family and to those around me. And to this conflicted world where so many are in pain. Amen. Please stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
but the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. Believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the Lord's goodness and care, let's raise before him our petitions for the church and the world. For all priests, may God continue to refresh and renew them in their vocation to shepherd his people on the way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been displaced from their homes by war or conflict, may the Lord protect them and bring them back in safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Lord to help us understand more deeply the challenges of pregnancy and parenting moms, to respond with increased care and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us, may God have mercy on them, especially Donna Mahoney, Rosemary Smith, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Kim Palmer, for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Linda Murphy, for whom this Mass is being offered today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your good graciousness, hear these humble prayers that we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our, offer our offertory hymn is number 616, I Have Loved You, number 616. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. Seek the face of the Lord and long for Him. 
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> it's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world and in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin. So that you lo might love in us what you loved in your Son by his obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the, all, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy, and all the people you've claimed for your own. Remember your servant, Linda Murphy, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with her son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Mary and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is number 599, Christ Be Our Light, number 599. Longing for light, we wait in darkness, longing for truth. We will also sing number 505, Only This I Want. to wear the 
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we may now celebrate in science we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord, amen. A few announcements. The Christmas Fair is two weeks away on November 9th and 10th. Bidding for the silent auction will begin next Saturday, November 2nd. Please see the bulletin and the link on our fair website to preview items during this week. The Knights of Columbus deceased members mass is November 3rd at 11 a.m. All Saints Day, a holy day of obligation is Friday, November 1st. Masses are at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. We will be collecting the baby bottle change donations next weekend. After all the masses, all proceeds will benefit Abundant Hope. Join us next weekend for children's liturgy during the 9 a.m. mass and coffee and donuts after mass. There will be a second collection uh, next weekend for the hurricane relief. And it will be a second collection, but if you're uh, paying, uh, making a donation by check, if you would make it payable to the church, St. Mary's, but in the memo field, put down hurricane relief, and those in the county will be set aside, and uh, uh, the parish will make one check to donate to the Catholic Charities, who will be dispersing these funds to the disaster-stricken communities. 
Well, I see a number of you wearing your uh, Patriots colors today. Let's hope that uh, things uh, fare better and, uh, uh, and that uh, Derek May survives uh, the football game. Uh, but in any instance, uh, uh, have a wonderful, blessed, oh, a beautiful another day in the, in the neighborhood for the month of October has just been great. It's a little bit on the cool side, but hey, it's almost uh, the end of no, uh, almost the end of October. So please be careful in your travels uh, this weekend and uh, through the week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be a protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, for the power of God cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus. And our closing hymn is number 497, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. <laughs>